Thank you for tuning in on our third episode. Uh, we've made uh, two episodes in Spanish uh, for our Spanish listeners, and we'll be making this third episode in English. Uh, this podcast is in Spanish, but goes by the name of Modulo Musicos Unidos, uh, which technically means uh, Musicians United Module, which will provide a lot of information for a community of uh, professional musicians, uh, authors, composers, and publishers, uh, valuable information in the music industry. Before we get into the interesting topic uh, today, I will be providing a little bit of background uh, since all of the information that I provided on episode one was mainly uh, all of it in Spanish uh, on episode one and episode two. Uh, so we'll have both uh, episodes. Uh, you'll get to find the English episodes with the English topics and English titles. My name is Max Mejia. I am a musician and producer and founder of MMP Global Music, uh, which you can visit our webpage, uh, mmpglobalmusic.com, and get all of the information of the services and what we do in the music industry. Uh, you also have all the contact information at the very bottom of the page. Uh, you have the email, you have the phone number, you have fax. Um, any information or any comments, you can also please uh, be sure to provide feedback uh, so that we can provide the best format for our English uh, listeners as well. We've very recently started this uh, podcast and would like to provide information for our Spanish listeners as well as our English listeners. Not a lot of companies will have this information out there, uh, especially in the form of podcast. Uh, so it's very interesting with what we're trying to accomplish and the information that we're trying to provide for the community of uh, professional musicians, uh, authors, composers, uh, artists, and publishers. All right, so we'll like to get into the uh, uh, topic today, uh, which will uh, talk a little bit about uh, the case that's happening at this point in time with BMG and versus Cox uh, Communications. I worked for Cox personally, uh, myself, for about four to five years um, in the state of Rhode Island. Uh, so I did get to learn a lot during those years that I worked for Cox Communications. Uh, that was from about 2005 all the way through 2008. Uh, I was already in the music uh, industry uh, as a musician. I was traveling uh, with different uh, bands uh, locally and international and I was having fun. I was trying to get my way uh, with the schedule, uh, the schedule that I that I worked. Um, at that time I remember I worked from uh, 11.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, so it was very hard for me to get into you know rehearsals and you know catch up flights and, um, you know, and at least work around the schedule um, because I, I also commuted for about 40 minutes uh, back and forth every day. So it was, it was very hard for me to, um, to maintain that uh, for that long period of time. For about four to five years um, in the state of Rhode Island, uh, so I did get to learn a lot from Cox Communications uh, from, you know, their internet services, cable services, uh, and also um, phone services and cell phone. And at that time, uh, 2018, uh, they were going into um, Rhapsody uh, and streaming, and, and they were getting uh, into that uh, field. Uh, but in the case of BMG, is suing Cox, or at least sued Cox Communications in 2014, over copyright infringements of the ISP's customers. Uh, so like tech companies on receiving end of a copyright complaint, Cox Communication pleaded safe harbor. So their argument is that uh, it couldn't be liable for the infringement of its customers under that uh, famous Digital Millennium Copyright Act. Uh, BMG said that Cox Communications had a deliberately shoddy policy for dealing with repeated infringers among its customers base uh, therefore should be denied any safe harbor protection uh, so the first time around 
uh, jury sided with the music firm. So originally, uh, it was $25 million uh, copyright infringement judgment against Cox uh, was overturned on appeal, though it was based mainly on uh, technicality relating to the instructions given to the jury in the original case by the judge. Uh, there were other comments made by uh, the appeals court uh, during this uh, seemed to back up uh, to back up uh, BMG's arguments about Cox having lost uh, safe harbor protection as a result of its lackluster approach to dealing with the infringement on its networks. Um, however, I mean, you know, this case now it's heading back to court for the repeat run of the whole legal battle. So it's it's a back and forth. Um, a BMG a legend of, of the infringement, you know, Cox stating that, uh, you know, they, they, they're under the safe harbor and they're not liable uh, for those infringements because it is it is users uh, making these uh, reproduction and using these uh, master's, master's recordings uh, infringements. There was an article written uh, by the billboards, uh, which, you know, we, you know, are reviewing the case or at least following up on the case and seeing exactly how uh, this is going to turn out, uh, which both sides have been making, you know, various requests of the judge ahead of that repeat run. Uh, one standout a request came from the team of Cox, which uh, they asked BMG side to ban from using the word stealing and, and deft and some other related terms, uh, which such language is not, you know, unduly uh, pre judicial uh, to Cox. Uh, if a party has good cause uh, to object to specific comment made by the opposing counsel, the party may do so at any time. Uh, so given that ruling also provides the all clear for BMG to use any related terms, uh, maybe its lawyers could try to find a way to include in its open remarks all of the following, which, you know, would be like robbing, nicking, swipping, uh, filching, thieving, uh, looting, pinching, uh, there's a whole bunch of words that uh, can be utilized. Again, and this is all, you know, in court, taking place in court, and actually, and that's what, you know, Cox is, is uh, asking the judge to overturn, which is, you know, very odd, but I guess they're, they're not wanting for this information to be out there and saying that they're stealing uh, musical works and, and, and master recordings. In uh, other episodes, we'll get into the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, uh, what it means, uh, what, uh, you know, the, the especially the ones, companies that have a web page, what they need to be aware about the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, uh, what that covers, um, you know, what they're liable for, what they're not liable for, which is, you know, could be very tricky. But we'll get into that other episodes and provide a little bit more detailed information. Uh, this episode number three uh, is focused on the case uh, BMG versus Cox Communications, uh, which also at this point in time, because of their uh, BMG suing Cox Communications, other labels are joining uh, this case uh, on the side siding with uh, BMG. Uh, so that includes all the big major labels like Warner Chappelle, uh, you have Universal, you have Sony uh, getting into this mix uh, as well, which, uh, you know, part of his division uh, of BMG, it's, you know, Sony as well. Uh, but they're getting into, into joining this case and um, alleging that, you know, uh, such infringements have been re been repeatedly happening and uh, Cox Communication is trying to avoid that by, you know, providing uh, information and stating that uh, they're under the safe harbor. So we'll see how this turns out. We'll certainly uh, keep following this case. I uh, just wanted to bring this out and make sure that, um, you know, our community in the business is aware because it, it's important to know what's happening. Uh, even though you're musicians, you're you're in the music industry, it also relates in your in your personal life. I mean, you you may have a service and you don't know exactly what uh, what's happening, you know. Uh, but it's good to know uh, that way you learn more uh, from the business and and know exactly what what's going on behind the scenes. 
if there is any feedbacks, any comments, please uh, do so. I really would appreciate those comments. It will help me uh, de develop to a better communicator <laughs> because, again, I am trying to uh, provide this information out there for, you know, our community, uh, independent community, uh, musicians, especially, um, you know, authors, composers, um, you know, publisher and provide information that you normally, you know, you, you don't get aware if you don't have the time to read this information, we'll have the opportunity to be able to listen uh, to our podcast uh, in Spanish, again, I'll repeat it once more, is Modulo Musicos Unidos. It uh, stands for Musicians United Module. So once again, I thank you for uh, tuning in and um, keep in mind that all the titles that will be in English uh, will be titled in English. Also, be sure to follow us on all of our social media as MMP Global Music. Uh, that goes for Twitter Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, all of the social media, uh, you can certainly find us. And be sure to uh, subscribe to our podcast, uh, which will be having a lot of interesting information. See you next time.